Hello and welcome to our discussion on writing formulas and uh, naming binary molecular compounds. Uh, first thing you need to know is that uh, <clears throat> we should know already that covalent molecular compounds are uh, compounds constructed of only nonmetals. Okay, only nonmetals will be present in these compounds. Now you may occasionally see a metalloid, and that's okay, but you will not see uh, metals uh, acting as ions at all in these compounds. So knowing that, let's get started. Um, the rules, and I'm going to urge you to look at these rules now, but we'll kind of talk through them, but mainly once we practice a little bit, come back to the rules and confirm that they make sense to you. Uh, but here we go. We're talking about a, a substance made of only nonmetals, and I always like to go back to a benchmark like carbon dioxide. Okay, so when we write the chemical formula for carbon dioxide, we're going to write the symbol for the first term, and then we'll add any subscript that corresponds to the number of atoms present. Simply the word carbon implies there's only one there, so we don't need to put a one here because the C gives us our one. We'd only put a number here if it was two or greater. Um, and there's a prefix chart below. So if there were two, we would say dicarbon, or three, tricarbon. You might say there's one. Well, I want you to use monocarbon. And well, the reason is the prefix mono is not used in the first term of a molecular or covalent compound. Okay, so we don't need to put monocarbon here. We'll say carbon. Um, then uh, write the symbol for the second term. Okay, perfect. Oxygen. There we go. And then we'll add the subscript that corresponds to the number of atoms present here below, dioxide to CO2. That's pretty much how writing the formula goes. What you have to do is memorize these prefixes. You've already seen them because of our discussions on hydrates, but uh, we do need to commit them to memory. So let's write the following three. Nitrogen dioxide. Well, we got nitrogen, we have oxygen. So how many nitrogens are there? Well, the absence of a, pre of a prefix tells you there's one, so we'll just leave that as is. Dioxide, di means two, in O2. Carbon monoxide. Okay, we have carbon and we have oxygen. Carbon again, one, mono, or monoxide, one, so CO. Phosphorus pentachloride. Phosphorus is P, chlorine is Cl. Phosphorus is like mono, so that's a one. Penta, five, PCl, five. So there's no charge considerations here when making these compounds. It's only the number of atoms telling you what the prefix needs to be. We only use these prefixes for covalent comp compounds. These are molecular covalent compounds. And we use them in describing hydrates. That's it. We don't ever use these prefixes in describing ionic compounds. So let's do one more that's a little odd. Let's do um, tetraphosphorus. Or no, let's do tetra... Um, you know, the tetraphosphorus, the deca oxide. Now you might notice you've got the prefix dec here. Dec is deca. That's ten, and tetra, tetra is four, so it's P four O ten, and that's how this works. When we need to put the name to a binary molecular compound, we're simply going to take the first term, name it, carbon. Include a prefix if two or more atoms of that element are present. There's no two or more, it's just one. So we'll never use the prefix mono for the first term. So there's no mono there because there's not supposed to be. Name the second term, change the ending to ide, much like you would an anion. So oxygen is oxide, oxide. And then include a prefix in all cases to show number of atoms. So monocarbon, don't need to say mono. Two oxygen, so it's dioxide, carbon dioxide. All right, that means it's time to practice. Okay, so we have phosphorus and chlorine. So phosphorus, the prefix for three is trifluoride. Oxygen and fluorine, oxygen, fluoride. Prefix for two is di, oxygen difluoride. Silicon and oxygen, silicon dioxide. And that's how you write um, the names from the chemical formulas for a molecular compound. So, of course, these get more challenging, but the challenge often simply becomes being able to memorize each of these prefixes uh, for these values. So 
please come to class with questions. Please make sure that you understand the, the fundamentals of how to name molecular compounds, and I expect you have high-quality notes. Final note about molecular compounds. Molecular compounds can have common names. There are a few that we need you to know, um, and it's not to be punitive. It's just that they're so common you need to have them in your, your personal chemistry lexicon. So um, CH4 is methane. It's not carbon tetrahydride. NH3 is ammonia. It's not nitrogen trihydride. And H2 is water, not dihydrogen monoxide. You need to memorize these three. Chances are you're already on your way. Um, but the, the, the big idea is here, there are some compounds that are so uh, ingrained in our culture that the chemical nomenclature needs to be um, what we already have in place for that thing. So, um, Again, I hope you have high-quality notes come to class and be prepared to do some further examination of uh, molecular compounds and covalent compounds. And we will see you on the next video.